Hi everyone, welcome back to our renowned gamer series. We are joined by Steve from 8 Bit. Hi. Hello. How, you How doing? are you? <laughs> I'm very well. How are you? I'm right, other than the fact that we keep asking each other the same questions at exactly the same time. It's the way it works. It's okay. We're yeah. used to it. We're all used to Skype in this in this modern hellscape. We'll be fine. We'll 2020, be fine. we live in cameras now. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. pretty, I think it's the only place I still exist because the rest of the time I'm on my own. So I imagine that I probably am just in this little box that people get yeah, to see I, every now and then. I live in a widescreen rectangle on this chair. That's looks glorious though. It really does. So brown. So brown. So much brown, right? It's lush. Yeah. Lush right. and brown. Like, two things that may not. The chair is actually green, but it looks brown on the camera. It does. Right? I'll, uh, I'll let it go. I'll try and ignore just how drawn to all that brown. Even the curtains look brown, Steve. Oh really? Well, they're yeah. red. They're not. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure they are red, but yeah, they do. It's cool. It's cool. I love it. <laughs> well, let's okay. uh, let's just start by if you could give us a brief kind of overview of of, of you and how you ended up um, so into games. Well, my name is Steve. I collect exclusively brown things. <laughs> um, the way that I got into games, I don't know. I, I've always played games since I was a kid, um, and for the past seven years I managed to turn my job from comedian to comedian that plays video games so I'm a very lucky boy fantastic very yeah. lucky well let's yeah. I mean let's start with that kind of the first instance of, of video games kind of becoming a thing for you so do you have like a favorite childhood game or earliest gaming memory yeah I mean I mean as much the earliest gaming memory is um I've, I've, I've talked about this before on things but uh, a home pong console um so actually an ad Adnan Grandstand TV Game 3000 was what it was called. And it had little paddles on it and little Amazing. buttons. And it, it, I had it on a black and white TV because I'm from the past. Uh, and I'm not quite that old, but it was something that my parents had got several years before I was born. And then I sort of inherited that. So proper old black and white Pong on a telly. Amazing. It's my first memory of games. So I've done a lot from Pong to, I don't know, what, what's the last thing I played? What was I playing yesterday? Kind of remember now, like indie games. I'm playing a lot of indie games. I'm quite excited about that Transformers Battlegrounds game that came out. Oh today. yeah, because because like a, it's a turn-based strategy game, but for kids. So I can that won't be too much bother. I can handle that. Yeah, it's so. rad. That's, is it Space Ape? Is that the Space Ape game? I'm going to what, turn out to be. Oh no, it's a different one. I'm going to turn out to be completely wrong, and Jason and Linda are going to have to edit that so that I don't look like I don't know what I'm doing in this industry. I'll, I'll say both. Yes, it is. And. No, no, it isn't. And then you can make me look clever in the edit. Yeah, if you could just go, no, Lauren, I don't know what you're talking about. This is horrific. And no idea you're... what you're talking about. Yes, you're correct. Thanks. No worries. <laughs> Get it in the edit. So how, how important would you say um, games are for your inspiration? I mean, obviously, Go 8-Bit is, is video games, but how do you, yeah. do you find any inspiration in games? How does that kind of work? But my relationships with games has changed an awful lot because it, like, obviously, as you say, with Go 8 Bit and then all the other stuff I've done since, um, my work now is coming up with hopefully entertaining ways of using games to amuse people while I am moderately competent at them. But before that, I did, like, I, I was a big game when I was a kid. I drifted away from it at university because I was busy with uh, drinking responsibly mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. chums. But uh, then I drifted back, sort of, PlayStation 3 was the console that got me back into it, the first HD console I had. And um, I've always just, like, I've always played games. My free time's always been playing games. And now, now my relationship with it, actually, strangely, it became all work, 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 and because I needed to pay for my house. But what I've actually done uh, since lockdown is I've taken a bit of a pause from the, I stream on Twitch, but I've been away from there for a few months, just working on uh, Wi-Fi Wars, which is the new thing I do. Um, and I'm, so I'm actually just playing games for fun again. Nice. And I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, games are fun, aren't they? I they really them. are. Yeah, I occasionally I am going to sneeze horrifically because I've had a cold and I can feel one coming. Uh, but by identifying the sneeze, I now feel like I won't. That's it. You can you can actually summon it away, uh, and you can I, also say bless you before someone sneezes, and that can sometimes take it away as well. I've never known that one. Happy before. to share share my tips with you. I sort of feel like a Voldemort vibe to it. Like if you if you feel like you can't name it, then it feels like more of a thing. But now that I've said sneezing, it's not so scary. It's not going to be an issue. But if it does happen, I'll, I'll try and get the bless you in beforehand. When I see the nose twitching, it, I'll, I'll sort you out. It'll be fine. And I'll try not to sneeze on the camera and ruin this. Killer. Um, <laughs> so in this kind of, again, not wanting to talk too much about the, the time that we're living in at the moment and the challenges that, that come with, because I think we're probably all six to the back teeth of thinking about it's it. It's dreadful, Lauren. I hate it. 
don't get me started, mate. Don't even get me started. Okay. I haven't like even therapy, had the Laura. guts to watch so that. So sad. Sorry, I'm not helping. That's the no, it's what fine. You um, I haven't uh, even had the guts to watch the 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 debate from last night. I just don't think I don't oh, know if I can do it anymore. Don't look at don't look at the internet, you fool. It's dreadful. We're all going to be the fine. Gov- the government won't feel feed, feed starving children. They Why will not? not. They will not. But hey, we've got Why video games. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, detracting from all of that, how yeah. important are games as an escape? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you, you you can't. Uh, I mean, the context is absolutely relevant, isn't it? Because <laughs> every single day, I can just dr- disappear into a game and, f- and forget what the world is like. When I was a kid, I just did it for fun and played with my mates or play in my bedroom or with my brother, or whatever. But uh, and g- game games are legitimately a way way to go to a better place and even in games that are set like fallout mm. that's a not that's a nice day out that's it's still yeah now. It's still it's weirdly right. soothing <laughs> you've got a dog <laughs> it's could it's be worse right. so i i truly do value games as an escape from uh, everything i kingdoms and castles is the entirely random indie game that i really like. you get on steam for a few quid but it's just like a really casual build a little civilization thing, start with a little castle and a house, and then get more and more people moving, and you grow your city and build, I mean, all those little things. And just, I, I'm, re- I'm really into sort of quite zen gaming stuff, where it's very casual, very loose objectives, and you can just sort of potter and tinker and just take your time. I'm, I'm, I'm finding first, like, Last of Us uh, 2, I still haven't finished yet, um, and I tried to have a go, I started looking at one as like, like you know, like your pile of shame that you haven't got around to, so Arkham Knight I started, yeah. um, what else? Like, uh, oh, um, Far Cry 5, oh, sneezing! Bless you! Oh. Oh. That's good. <laughs> oh! Oh, Christ. This close! Yes. Bless you again. So, thank you. <laughs> I just, I just wiped my nose. For the sure I don't think I don't think it was a messy one, but it'd be terrible. Oh, hang on. Bless you. <laughs> I don't know why I'm jumping. Like it's gonna get me. Uh, yeah, no. So um, I've been trying to play open world games uh, like Arkham Knight, Far Cry Five, and Last of Us Part Two. With this one, I was talking about before I sneezed everywhere, um, and I can't focus or enjoy those. It's too much. Like, it's too much like hard work, and it's quite weighty. Mm. Whereas actually, sort of casual indie stuff or um, Slay the Spire, I've played quite a lot of because yeah. it's just cards. It's just you know, it's it's quite simple. A run lasts an hour. Mm. It's very limited rule set. Anything like that, I seem to be really, really getting into. Whereas anything that I am the, the thirty-hour campaign game or the open, I just can't. Well, it's, I think it, I, I wonder if it's something to do with with mental capacity, and and how much we Ow. can actually well, take. Well, you've the call there, Lauren, but no, that's fair. <laughs> I've, I've certainly found, I mean, going, you know, along the lines of kind of casual and relaxing and without having that kind of time uh, pressure or anything yeah. like that. Animal Crossing saved my life during lockdown. You say Animal, hey, you say Animal Crossing, and I did, I put hundreds of hours in Animal Crossing, but there's, there's one on PC, and I think it's called Littlewood, and it's sort of like Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley, another indie game, but there's just no pressure at all. Oh. Days are really slow. No one, like, people turn up and go, oh, I could do with a house... But if you don't build them one, just every day. They go, don't mind. Oh, I'll just, pretty house. But I'll just I'll just sleep in the field if you don't That's get around great. to it. Just have a potter. It's even more chill than Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley. It's incredible. It just does it doesn't care at all. Just really? so take your time. And you can landscape from day one. It's very good. I, it's I cool. like that because I did. I mean, I, I I use Stardew as my my in between drug. Yep. Yep. In, yeah, in, yeah. The, in the big gap that we that we suffered. Um, but yeah, going from Stardew back to Animal Crossing was like, oh, Animal Crossing is a dream. In compared to Stargy, where I'm panicked trying to get things done all of the time. No, it was wonderful. I've got to find out if it's called Littlewood now, because I want you to play it. I way. want to play it. I've written it down, actually. So let's Little see. Littlewood. There it is. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, I'm in for that. Get on that. Little Woods. Thank you very much. Um, I think I shared, just going slightly off, off topic, I shared an um, uh, article towards the end of lockdown saying that video games have no impact on, on children and violence and all of that kind of stuff. And shared it, you know, saying, this is great, finally we've got proof. And I think my boyfriend was the first to comment with, yeah, but you did end up going out and, and actually digging a garden after playing all of that Animal Crossing, though, didn't you? It's like, yeah. oh, oh yeah. No, it has it actually impacted and changed the way that I was thinking. And along the garden's hard work, isn't it? Like, how long <laughs> did you stick with it? I know, they're still going. Had a veg patch and everything. I got so into got it, mate. Patch. The test is year two. It's, it's whether that becomes weeds and a herb that grew really well. 
or whether or whether you're bothered to turn the soil. Like we've got an allotment in our garden, and uh, first year, a lot of veg. This year, a lot of weeds. We'll see. And Maybe next. Yeah, that's it. Maybe I would have lost interest entirely. I'll be back to uh, Animal Crossing. Just no. Sorry. Close the blinds. Yeah, I'm busy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, do you think? I mean, do you have you found that lockdown has impacted the way that you play games? Then, I mean, has it actually made you want to to step away from the more kind of? Yeah. Well, I stopped. I stopped streaming on Twitch because it was just exhausting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I mean, in a very real way, in terms of the way that because obviously I sort of do that for work as well. It it was just getting a bit much uh sort of having having to sounds so ridiculous like oh poor me i had to play games every day and get paid uh like it's, it's i don't not know i'm really lucky and i'm really grateful for what i do but um there is a sort of the sort of youtuber burnout thing is it, real and i think what i hadn't uh, like, I, I, joke, I joked about having therapy i mean i do, I do have a therapist but I, uh, what, what's interesting about lockdown i think is that the claustrophobia of being trapped actually made that pressure of streaming feel much more intense so so it didn't feel as um before i used to do it around other work i'd be doing gigs or writing my book or do whatever i was doing mm. and it was just one piece of the puzzle whereas all of a sudden when you're stuck in the house it can suddenly feel an awful lot like i could just live in this room forever this chair reclines i could just sleep in it and it was just a bit too much and i was starting to drive myself mm. insane by being so that did change but then uh, the inverse of that is that um my wife's uh, teacher, she was trained to be a teacher, so she just started as a newly qualified teacher this year, which is the worst year ever to become a teacher with all the lot with all the COVID stuff. Yeah, but it meant that I part of the reason I stopped streaming as well was that my family who who did do childcare couldn't and the preschool shut. So I was full time carer for my daughter. Oh wow. Uh, from May, I wanna say May. Um, and then all the way through the summer pretty much. And so actually what I did get was I introduced my kid to loads of games so she now like like she likes Minecraft um, she, uh, Two Point Hospital which will come oh, up that is she wonderful. loves it she loves running a hospital uh, and Parkitect which is sort of a roller coaster Fab, cycle yeah. so those sort of things she likes an isometric -y management sim um, she knows who Sonic and Mario are now so actually needing to amuse a child with different things every day you can't just keep making robots out of cardboard boxes and doing painting That's so it. I've had that really nice thing of introducing my daughter to video it, games, so it, it that's been a new so way of... It must be so special. Yeah, it must yeah, be so nice, is. especially if it's something that you loved. I mean, I know Two Point is, is, is a, a good example, hopefully, if you know if you have any connection to the theme games, and then to be able to introduce Two Point to someone. Like, it's such a... It must be such a yeah. wholesome thing to do. That's lovely. She's really good at it. And she knows, yeah, she knows that with all of those games, you've got to follow the rules. So the games tells you, what is it we need to do to make a hospital better? And she is adamant that that's what we're doing next. She's very, very focused. And oh, I love uh, I'd love her so much I could burst. Oh, it looks, I can uh, see. I can see it on your face. I can see she's it. She's the best one. The rest oh. of them are dreadful. But. <laughs> I mean, obviously, this is all about Guildford for us. We're, we're very yes. excited to shout about our, our favourite place in the world, if that isn't a bit weird. Might be, don't know. Um, I think St Guildford is your favourite place in the world. Uh, I'm sure that's true for some people, but it's a it's, it's a ballsy weird. first choice. Yeah, it's a bit pedestrian. Yeah. It's like Ash were a fo well, they were a good band, but they're no one's favourite band. Oh god, what no if they are though? Favourite band is Ash. I'm going to find some people and and start to convert them. That's what I'll do. I'll find them some better. Different, right. not better. Hey, look, Guildford, Guildford's great. I just think Guildford, maybe somewhere out there is a slightly better city. It's probably that I've spent so much time there <laughs> uh, and that we're all kind of entrenched in this development, you know, world where we're constantly... Are you trapped? Thinking. Do you need me to send help? Are you able to talk freely now? I, can I write... Wink if you... Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. All right. Got it? Yeah. I can't yeah. wink. Can you get tell? On that. Uh, but no, but look, Guildford's fine. It, <laughs> but it's a place. A gaming the gaming centre is amazing. Like, the stuff that's come out of there... If, Thank God Peter Molyneux started up Bullfrog uh, there, because the amount of companies that have fallen out Absolutely. the back of that... Absolutely. Well, let's go with um, it. Which would you, would you say is your fave, if you could? Studio or game? I don't mind. <sighs> oh, there's too many. I mean, you've got to say Bullfrog, because that's what started it. Mm -hmm. like, every, everything that came out of Bullfrog with Lionhead or, you know, well, Media Molecule or Two Point, like, all that, all that core team of people that were sort of there and then fragmented, you know, through EA and Microsoft. Steve, you know your history. Were... I've got time for this. This is brilliant. I wrote a book about video game history. So. <laughs> love also, it. I genuinely love it, but it, like, it is, that's, the, it has to be Bullfrog because, yeah, because every, every, everything that you're talking about in your games festival, probably someone that works at every single one of those companies worked for Bullfrog or a company that came out of Bullfrog. Yeah, there's, there's actually that's people in the background waving. 
And whilst yeah. I didn't, I am lion heads and two points, so I, and media molecule, so picked up towards the end of all of that joy. But yeah, right. these guys were fully involved. Yeah. <laughs> Because, th- you see, Theme Park for me was huge. When Theme Park, the original Theme Park came out, although I prefer the isometric ones that came later, like the Roller Coaster Tycoons or, uh, or um, uh, blah, 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 Parkitect is a really mm-hmm. good one on, on Steam, um, or, and, and Theme Hospital. But I think the main game for me was actually, it was a Lionhead game called The Movies, which I must have spent hundreds of hours playing, it, like, I think about 2004, 2005. It's a real bugger to um, run on a modern PC. Mm-hmm. You can do it, but you have to download all sorts of patches and things. But the movies was a great game. So if anybody isn't familiar with it, you literally ran like a Hollywood studio from the 1920s or whenever it was all the way through to present day. And you would research new movie types and you'd hire actors and they'd have egos and you'd manage their relationship. Really, really good sort of blend of theme park and yeah. The Sims, but set around movies. And you actually got to watch the movies that it made. So it would show you these dog shit animatronic <laughs> things. But they, they were what you'd done. And you could you, people did make quite... Um, complicated machinima sort of mm. style stuff in it. I thought they probably still do, but um, yeah. So I'd probably say Lionhead because the movies I probably sank the most time into. But the, the, I mean, the correct answer is Bullfrog. No. Well, okay. again, and like you said, it's all connected, so it's it's a legit answer for both. You can say Lionhead and Bullfrog together. Definitely fits. Yeah, but then I like I love Two Point Hospital, and I like playing that with kids. Mm. And Little Big Planet's an amazing thing, and that's me. You know, Media Molecule. Like they're they're all the. the isn't Guildford good for games? Isn't it weird that it's so That's good for games? That's the you put in whatever the trailer is for the thing. <laughs> there you go. Guildford is great uh, for the, games. It is. Guildford, it's great for games. That's it. That's our teaser. Done. Yeah. Sorted. So let's talk about... I mean, obviously your work with Go8Bit, you, you know, a lot of inspiration has to be taken from video games, obviously. Sure. Um, yeah. But how do you... I mean, if you're having to... I don't know, research or find something new or, or look, you know, look for something that's slightly left field. How do, you, how do you kind of get inspiration? How do you go down those paths to find those well, things? Well, the way, the way that was, I mean, Wi-Fi Wars, which is the thing that I do now with Rob Sedgebeer, um, it, it, it is, the, is the sort of main focal point for everything I've done since. So um, Rob Sedgebeer was technical manager on Go the TV show, but he actually was like the tech guy when we did Go as a live show before it got commissioned Mm -hmm. and that he invented this thing where when we used to do the live show in like back rooms of pubs uh he put like little wi-fi network in the room and then everybody sat in the audience would play a game so they'd actually all uh, compete on their phones um and lucky for us no one realized how cool that was so (laughs) no one paid rob properly when we made the tv show so me and rob still owned the cool bit so that's that that became wi-fi wars which is now we know we toured it around theatres and um, we developed it for online. But what, what, what it's now done incredibly for us uh, this year is um, become a very useful tool for us because everybody's in lockdown. Um, the ability to be able to do a live interactive show remotely for large numbers of people become quite a thing. So we just finished the first few shows with um, Captain Morgan, uh, The Rum, Brilliant. incredibly, <laughs> sponsored us doing this big show. with. Um, so we had influencers like uh, James Buckley um, or LV General, Elves the Witch, guys like that. Um, being captains but then all their viewers would log in on their phones and they'd all play games against each other and score points and win things and uh, and then off the back of that and the development work that Rob's done we've now managed to do a lot of um, team building stuff for companies so it's very very nice. very very different sort of worlds so it's not TV shows it's all very corporate but we're doing like quizzes and uh, gaming battles with companies where you can have sales versus marketing versus HR uh, doing internal battles. So we um, we do a lot for Capital One or a bank, and um, we do like, like we can theme it for Halloween and Christmas parties and things. And so we sort of become weirdly because we're stuck in our houses and we can't do gigs. Just discovered that actually serendipitously, there's loads of people who used to be able to spend time together that can't anymore who want to sort of feel that connectivity. Yeah. So what's been really nice this year is this weird thing that me and Robin have been doing for seven years uh, that was sort of going okay the world conspired to create this perfect environment for it to make sense as to why two guys had built that. So um, in terms of creativity, um, what it's about with me and Rob has always been about the scalability of, the, of that solution because the thing, the thing that we always enjoyed about Go 8-Bit was it felt very inclusive as a live show and there was some sense of that with the TV show but it, it drifted and what the tech that Rob's made, this is why I, I can talk so um, uh, grandiose about it because it's not, it's not damn me, I just shout. Rob's the man that invented all the technology um, but he has built this now infinitely scalable thing where any number of people can be involved and play games collaboratively and competitively. Awesome. And as a gamer, that's what 
I wanted. So yeah. if, if I've ever got an idea, I just ask the clever nerd I met to build it, and then he he's got loads of ideas. But he doesn't even need me to come up with ideas. I mean, I literally just turn up. But uh, <laughs> say something. Yeah, it's just a few words, and he just makes something incredible and, and hands yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, like Rob, that. what if everybody played a VR game and navigated a maze at the Royal Institution? He just goes, Damn. yeah, all right, I'll, do, I'll just do that. He's Brilliant. built video conferencing software now. He's built like um, this whole TV broadcast video conferencing software just so we can make shows the way we want. He's, he didn't need to do that. That's he's, very cool. It's, it's a life way. useful to know uh, someone like get, that. Yeah, no, he's good. He's getting paid all right. He's doing all right. He's okay. <laughs> it's slightly left field again. I have ADHD and I'm learning that the right. what I need is to gamify to almost trick my brain into doing things and it sounds like what you're doing there with you know team building and getting to and making sure you're retaining those connections it's essentially gamifying going to work every day which you can't do so let's find a way to keep those yeah, interactions. Yeah it, no, it, 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 very, it very much is there and I, I mean and I relate to that as well I, the, I, I finally because um, there was nothing to do for about six months so I finally got myself up to 5k but I did it with one of the apps that sort of pushes you to nice. do it because yeah. like just get, walking out and running sounds dreadful but when you're getting that push for little things, same with like press ups and sit ups and mm. those sorts of things, if it's pushing you to do three more each time. You go, yeah, no, I can, yeah. and you get the sense of, yeah, oh, I, I got a little something. medal in an app. Yeah. It's not oh, real. I got a little, little uh, explosion or something. But yeah, exactly, it really does. It's a rush. Yeah, it's nice. It's not always bad. Social media is dreadful, but well, that means it, right if you use it well. Has its moments, I suppose. Um, so let's talk about your <laughs> every now and then, Steve. You'll find. Oh, uh, Twitter in moderation. I don't know. Every time I go on there, it's like a bonfire. Five it's minutes a month. Eight. You'll be okay. Oh, yeah, that sounds like more than enough. <laughs> yeah. And only follow two people who you really, really like. That's, yeah, exactly. People that, that you like so much that they can never irritate you. Because don't look at what's trending. Never look at trending on Twitter. Don't. And there's use nothing for you there. mute. My God, those muted words are the most important thing that Twitter ever gave us. You have to curate your feed. Some people just don't get it. <laughs> no. So let's talk about your, I mean, obviously you're, I have to say, we, we have had a chat with Sam uh, and he has taken Take us shit. through Take a, shit. a Not few, eh, maybe a few competitive moments. Um, <laughs> nothing to, he said that I'd be able to see it in your eyes when I mentioned it. So if I, if I say <laughs> Super Mario World, does that, does that mean anything? Or has he forgotten which game you were playing? Yeah, he's forgotten which game you were playing. <laughs> Yeah, we, we played Super Mario Brothers on the TV show. We didn't play Super Mario World, but uh, that is uh, no doubt of no surprise to you that Sam didn't know which Mario game he was talking well, may, about. Well, I mean, tell you what, I am interviewing and scribbling, and who knows, maybe it was me, but I'm happy for him no, to no, take the blame. No, no, was, I think we both know it was Sam. <laughs> I'm sure the tapes will, will bear So I on. think from, from that you get a hint as to what Sam's best gaming achievement was. Um, what would you turning, be? Turning it on. And put, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's got a menu. Yes, it has. Yeah. His PlayStation <laughs> packed up the other day, and he sent me he sent me a like death screen from it. I went, what do I do? And I went, well, I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Press a button. Hope for the best. Turn it off. Turn it on again. Uh, if it's got an error message, do what it says. I, I don't know, Sam. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you think is your greatest, your greatest gaming moment? Whether that's, I mean, witnessed by audience or, or otherwise the one that because we're talking about sam as i was talking about that, that in i think the first episode that went out of go eight bit i i kicked david james's ass at tekken 2 which was really really satisfying but the first series for us was um a really big deal because we were like a failed sketch comedy double act before we started get, doing go eight bit we weren't doing anything um so that show happening as well and that went really 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 well that sort of that battle and any, whenever you've got Susan Cameron so actually the, the energy is palpable so that it was a really really nice thing and you know it's nice to beat an England goalkeeper at anything mm. um, but I the the, the, re, the reason it's satisfying I was meant to talk about this in my stand up show and then we cut it because we didn't have time but I cheated <laughs> when the uh, menu came up for the player select when on Go 8 Bit there used to be this moment where it would do like the graphic of the rotating logo before we went three, two, one. Let's uh, let's go eat Bill Weather. You Dari used to say, and we we picked our characters, and then the graphic came up on the big screen. And when it did, I just nudged my strength right, so I got 150% attack, so I could kick his ass. But not because I'm a prick. I mean, I'm a prick, but because <laughs> they told me he was really good at it, and I'd never really played Tekken, so I bumped me up to try to make it look more even. But then I kicked his ass, and uh, and so I got I got told off. And got in a lot of trouble for doing it because they really thought, no. I don't know. It's not an off-com issue, is it? Nobody was gambling on the fucking thing. No, you might imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, but yeah. 
So um, that was my favourite game moment, although it's forever tainted by my um, by my cheating. Well, I, it just makes for a better story, though. If you just beat him, I mean, there's there's no there's no nuance. Yeah, it still to that doesn't story. know that's how I did it. <laughs> it. Doesn't really go anywhere. Just oh, you did, cool. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah no, I just played a game and I was good at it and yeah. I beat some. Cool story, okay. bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, hmm. hmm, what's your favourite Guildford game? Oh, we did this one. Studio. We did this one. We did, did we? No, we could. Did we? Studio. I don't know. I said the, I said the movies maybe. Um, I think. I mean, I think it probably is. The yeah, movies. it needs two, to. Two Point Hospital. I've played an awful lot. I'm sort of waiting for Two Point to come up with because I, I remember when Two Point came out. They were always talking about the Two Point universe and how there was going to be other games inhabiting that space. But Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo have sort of beat them to it. So I, I don't know. I imagine Two Point are making a roller coastery one or. They're up to something, that's for sure. I don't know what they're up to, to but yeah. Two Point Hospital was so good. I'd love to see whatever they do next. It it was a real, like, the the time lost, even when working on it. And that, you know, again, that's that's my job, to go in every day and play Two Point and talk about Two Point, blah, blah, blah. But even in that instance, I'd go home and play it for six hours without realising that I'd been playing it. You played testing on Two Point then? Oh, no, I was was the community manager and on-camera personality. Uh. I don't know if that's the right term. But yeah, so the, all of the Twitch streams and all of that kind of right. stuff, going to the shows and, yeah, yeah. and all of that. But yeah, it was, um, it was so incredible. Because, I mean, Theme Hospital was my, my number one, my love, <laughs> when I was when I was young. Right, right, right. I was a child, yeah, yeah. So. I, mean, I spent a lot of time in it when I was at theatre school, um, like on a mm. crappy little laptop in the evenings, to put, uh, the, uh, Theme Hospital. Mm. Um, I was going to say something. What was I going to say? No, it's gone out of my head. Forget it. I've forgotten. It's probably really, really insightful, though. So if you could nod... Like, uh, like oh wow yeah and then if I think of it I will, will, will yeah we'll just chuck it in or yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll I'll do an impression of you saying something insightful in post it'll be great yeah 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 just green screen it use um, <laughs> like latex I think they use latex on faces don't they just do that thank you <laughs> it'll be great so if you could work in games or if you if you wake up one morning and you're a game developer yeah what job are you going to do what would be your dream job well so, I mean I mean, I could talk about companies that I, can, that I think that I'd like to work at, mm-hmm. but like Wi-Fi Wars is it because I effectively get to tell a really clever man how I want massively interactive games to exist, and then he does it. And then you I, are a game I, designer I, at this point. I, it, so, yeah, yeah. Sort of, well, no, no, I'm just a shouty, I'm a shouty man with a very clever friend. But Wi-Fi Wars is sort of it because for me and my background with the sort of comedy and the live entertainment thing, it's having an audience all be able to viscerally react and all be enjoying that experience together. Is like the live in theatres, it's a really special thing because you get that real buzz of rivalry mm. and like just an audience, 300 people playing Pong is amazing because 150 of them are screaming hooray while the other 150 are <laughs> living that they balls up. So it's, that that's really, really fun. But I think if there's a... Like, I've been really lucky that I've got to I've got to meet a lot of really cool like, game developers over the years, events and, and through the shows and everything. Like Mike Beale's one that I'd love to work with. Like, he's, I was I was absolutely livid when he came out with that solitaire conspiracy game and he hadn't asked me to be in, be in it because I I now who used to be in video game nations in the bloody thing. So he he, he was fishing in our pond and he and he ignored me the shit. But. Uh, Hi. Like Be- Beagle's games are amazing. Thomas was alone is really good. I loved that game. I never Jim thought I'd get so attached to, to shapes. Like it just, it, I, I loved it. Well, the way I met Mike, he just drifted it. I was streaming it on Twitch and he just wandered in and then started berating me for being rubbish at it. Brilliant. So he just turned up while I was playing it. But he was wrong. There was one, he says he wasn't, but there's was one bit where you had to get the, uh, the long one over like a little jump and it was all moving around. And he, sa- he said the solution and it wasn't. He, was, he says he was right, but he wasn't. He balls it up. He well, forgot. I hope you never let that go. You should tweet it to him every now and then. He's actually not perfect. Guess Despite what, everyone? Says. That can be the, the kind of main takeaway from the festival. And what we learnt was Mike Bithell is so not perfect. A prick. <laughs> <laughs> is he from Guildford? Probably not. Yeah, so fucking. He's man. connected to us all in, in a way, probably. In a way. He's, he's always there, isn't he? Just, yeah. Being he's successful really and talented. Ah, oh, that really guy. <laughs> <laughs> so someone like that because I think I think I'd, I'd, I'd favour smaller studio stuff I think mm. like Wi-Fi Wars is the other one because it's just two of us and we get to create that thing in entirety but I think the smaller studio thing probably appeals to me more than mm. a big thing I like, I struggle I, I mean I do this because I couldn't work for a boss anyway because I'm unemployable but if I did work somewhere where if I felt like one of 600 people at Ubisoft. If I was just in charge of eyebrows on the new Assassin's Creed game, I think I'd want to kill myself. Whereas actually being in a six-man team or whatever, you'd, you could probably that you'd be making a real yeah. 
impact on on the finished product. I think I think I'd want to be able to see my fingerprints in it. Yeah, and wearing different hats and learning different skills, and I mean that's the place where you really you really learn. It's with exciting, yourself. isn't it? I think yeah, but then you know that's. I guess, I guess that's the nature of doing the sort of stuff I do. I, li- I like creating entertaining things, so I wouldn't want to just be, yeah, eyebrows. I don't want to be eyebrows. I see what I'm you're there. saying. I see what you're saying. I think it's a, it's a fair request. We've all asked it at some point. Um, so, final question, and then I will let you get on with, with, with your busy day. Um, it's not busy. A man's coming to put a new age. We're all in the same kind of space, right? We're either, like, <laughs> unbelievably crazy busy, or, eh, it's just one of those days, I think. Just... See what happens. I might mop the kitchen. Yeah, why not? It's a Friday, go mental. Well, you're, you should clean, like, clean on a Friday, then you get the benefit of the weekend, don't you? If, you? if you're mopping on a Monday, you might as well not bother because it's no, going to look point. dreadful by Friday. I don't need it to be. Mm. Always mop on a Friday. Oh, I'm so, so wise. Sorry, go on. <laughs> if you could clean your house on a Friday with any three video games characters, yes. which would they be? <laughs> If I could clean my house on a Friday with any three video game characters, <laughs> who would they be? It's a good question. I've not been asked that before. You'll be this, uh, uh, Birdo, because they've got, they've got they've got over on their face, haven't they? Yeah, so Birdo right. For um, sucking. <laughs> Very uh, good. Uh, <laughs> what else? Uh, I need like a rectangle for a towel. Towley from the South Park game. Yeah, he's in there. Always bring a towel. So Towley, Birdo, um, uh, Dizzy the Egg, in case you get hungry. Dizzy the Egg is such a fantastic choice. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, you can do the you can do the the, the dinner party one if you'd rather, but I assume Dizzy the Egg will no, still be there. No, I'm, no, I'm happy with my answer. Bam, done. Yeah. Birdo, Towley, Dizzy. I'm gonna write them down. I'm gonna compare everyone's. Towley. Gibson will give you good value on that, I'm sure. Sam probably couldn't think of three video game characters. Do you want to know, Sam's? Yes, please. I've got them. Vega. Vega? I think Vega's a terrifying he choice. He was on but... Wikipedia before he chatted to you. He didn't, he didn't pull Vega out of his ass. That's ridiculous. Oh, no, I praised <laughs> him so hard, probably. That's bullshit. Wonderboy? Who? Wonderboy? No, Wonderboy really likes Wonderboy. Uh, and Sam Drake. Who's Sam Drake? Well, Nathan, not... Not Nathan, it's other one. Sully? No, it's Sam. Sam Drake? What's his first name? Nathan... Nathan Drake. Who's Sam? Is there a <laughs> Sam in it? I'm going to double check. Sa- Sam Pumphalon's name is Sam. So, well, that's true. I've only played... So maybe, maybe Sam, with his massive ego... Yeah, he's put himself the like the most, the into the game. Adventure man was I mean, him. I'm going to... I'm just going to assume it's Nathan, but I think he meant... Yeah, unfortunately, I'm the person who played the most recent one of those games for 10 minutes before getting legit vertigo. <laughs> Having to oh, go, wow. oh, I can't play this. I can't I do it. I had 64 on the Switch. You know, the All-Stars did. It made me so sick. <laughs> How played it. It's awful. The Sunshine and Galaxy, right? Mario 64 made me want to vomit all over my trousers. It was I horrible. I don't think I could do it. I get really <laughs> funny about stuff like that. The only thing, weirdly, Thumper in VR. I can play oh, that to yes. death and never be sick. But anything yes, else, I, I just can't do it. I can't yeah. do VR where they're moving around. It makes, it makes me feel very, very bad very quickly. Like oh, Minecraft uh, is in VR now, the PlayStation VR. Uh, five minutes. I just I walked up a big hill and then jumped off it. Which was just, <laughs> just, just, just to see what that felt like. Uh, which is, uh, yeah, it's horrible. I don't so think I could do it. Yeah. It's yeah, like it's that horrible. tightrope movie. No, out. No. Anyways, on that note... <laughs> Yep. <laughs> thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us. Um, thank you. And I hope I haven't taken up too much of your uh, cleaning day. <laughs> no, no, I'm excited about it now because I've got I've got the whole uh, dizzy thing in mind. It's in there. So. Brilliant. I might have eggs. I might have eggs. You for should lunch. treat yourself to dizzy the egg afters. Once you've eaten the egg, play the game if you if you can, can find tra- it anywhere. I in can the draw his little face on the shell. He's not hard to draw. The it's Oliver true. twins are phoning it in a little bit, so I could. I might draw at Dizzy's face on an egg and boil it. I can't, I mean, I can't even remember the last time I thought about Dizzy the egg. I'm just, I'm so pleased wow. that you've even reminded me. So pleased. I'm gonna go They're making there. a new one. Are they? For the Spectrum, uh, whatever it's called. Cute. Oh, you know. Well, I'm yeah. going to look into that. New Dizzy game, mate. See, this is it. I could happily just sit here and talk about bizarre old video games with you forever, but I'm aware that I must. I must move on. Yeah, Thank okay. You. Well, it was nice to talk to you. It was lovely to talk to you too. If you get bored, you've got me details on Skype. Yeah, I'll give you a shout. I'm not yeah. doing anything. So. I don't want to interrupt egg time. Speak to you again. Bye. See ya. Bye.